everybody. Welcome back to Ordinary Adventures. Today we're going to take you on a full tour of Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Seas. It's the largest cruise ship in all of the world. And we're going to bring you around, show you every deck, every restaurant, every nook and cranny. And we're going to give you our pro tips so that if you're coming here to cruise, you'll know what to do, what not to do, and how to do it well. Yeah, before we booked this cruise, we knew nothing about this ship and we were searching for a video and you know what? We couldn't find a good video, so we're hoping that we could provide that service to you and help you in any way possible. There were a lot of videos, but they were geared towards people that are already taking cruises. And this video is gonna tell you everything you need to know from how much things cost, to what costs money and what doesn't. So if you've never taken a cruise, hopefully we can help you out. Come with us on this adventure. start things off in the boardwalk. This is an area for fun, games, food, entertainment. There's a bunch of restaurants here. There's a place called the Dog House, Boardwalk Dog House. We haven't eaten at. To be honest with you, it doesn't look that good. No, it's, well, it's funny. The ship is so big. There's so many places that we didn't get to eat at, and we were on an eight-day cruise. Yeah. And that's just crazy to me, you know what I mean? But it gives us something to look forward to for next time, I guess. But if you are looking for a good place to eat, there is Playmaker Sports Bar and Arcade. And this is a place, it's, it's like a classic modern sports bar. They have sports ball on TVs. They have <laughs> all this memorabilia all around the place. And it, it, the menu is kind of like your classic fried sports bar food. So if you like eat at like Applebee's or Fridays, it totally hit the spot for me. Yeah, it's like a good chain restaurant. Sometimes you're just in the mood for like a deep fried plate of like whatever and they've got you covered here. And not only that, they have an arcade. So if you want to grab a drink and play in the arcade, you could do that. There's a carousel, which is completely free. I thought it was going to be an upcharge, but it wasn't to our surprise. So I made Peter go on it with me. We had a great time, right, honey? Yes, a great time. <laughs> I just find it funny that like, Royal Caribbean has rides at sea, where Disney, which is known for the rides, doesn't have any rides at sea. Oh, it's so. just, yeah, it's just like a fun little thing. Like, you wouldn't expect it to be here, and why not? They got a carousel on board. The boardwalk is one of seven neighborhoods here on Symphony of the Seas. And one thing I like about what Royal Caribbean does is on cruise ships, because of the nature of how big a ship is, there's usually a lot of interior rooms. And what that means is the room is inside the ship, does not have any windows to the outside, does not have any balconies to the outside. But because you have a neighborhood like the boardwalk, you have the ability to have these outside rooms that are overlooking the boardwalk. Sure, it's not as tranquil as seeing the ocean. I'm sure it's more of a party atmosphere because you have a lot of loud noise out here, but it's it's better than a wall. If we ever came again, I really wouldn't mind one of these interior rooms because yeah. like you said, you still do get a balcony. Might not just be like, you might not be able to see whales and dolphins out of it. You'll see. <laughs> You see like drunk people walking around the boardwalk, <laughs> but you know, it, like you said, it's, as long as there, you get some sort of window, I feel like that would make me happy. One other thing you need to know about Royal Caribbean over say like a Disney cruise is, yes, your dining is included. If you go to the main dining room, you go to Windjammers, which is the buffet, there's a bunch of little places around the ship that you can eat for free and we'll point those out to you when we get to them. But there's also a ton of premium dining experiences that you do have to pay an upcharge for. Usually it costs per person, but Playmakers is actually per item, kind of like a regular restaurant. It's actually cheaper than a regular restaurant. But next up, I want to show you on the boardwalk is Johnny Rockets. Johnny Rockets is one of the restaurants aboard the ship and it's actually a $10 upcharge. It's not included in the normal dining. But with that $10, you can literally order anything on the menu. You could order as many items as you want. We've actually been here a few times. The food is so good. They have hamburgers, Reaper floats, milkshakes, french fries, onion rings. They got it all. It's exactly the same as it is on land, except I feel like the food's like even better for some reason here. I don't know if that's just my brain telling me that or what, but it's so fun. They do a little dance. All the servers are so attentive and nice. A lot of people actually recommend the breakfast here. Unfortunately, we never got up early <laughs> enough to make the breakfast, 
but I looked up the menu and it actually looks really good. I feel like it's like a hidden gem, but we can definitely recommend this place for lunch. It's a great option. And he told us that after they work their entire shift, they spend the nights practicing their dance moves. I gotta say, they're doing pretty good. <laughs> you know at Disney how they said the cast members make the magic? Well, the same thing is here on Royal Caribbean ships. The crew members here are all fantastic. And I'm not sure a lot of people know this, but they sign on for like six and a half month contracts. And they're working every single day, at least eight hours a day. And they're the happiest people I've ever met. Like, they are so grateful to be on here working. And from what I've read, like, the cruise industry in Royal Caribbean has, like, one of the highest retention rates. So it's like people are not only doing that six-month contract, but coming back and back again. And I don't know. I guess it's a long way of saying tip your servers. Tip your crew members. Uh, they deserve it. There's this art project here, and I, I don't really understand what it is, so I'm just going to go in there and experience and let you know. Okay, I think there's supposed to be like noises in here, but there's nothing. I don't understand this. Do I at least look cool? Yes. Maybe it's broken. There's like a high pitched noise in here. That's about it. Fun. Towards the back of the boardwalk, they have the ultimate abyss. This is a slide. It's the biggest slide at sea. It's 216 feet of slide. It looms 150 feet above sea and has two full 360 degree turns at gut-wrenching speeds. I wrote in a previous video and it is no joke. And it's a fun way to get from deck 16 all the way down to deck six. I mean, it's funner than taking an elevator for sure. At the very butt of the ship is the Aqua Theater. This is this outdoor venue where they put on shows, they play movies. We actually got to see one of the shows, it's called Hero, and it's an amazing show. I would say don't miss it. It's almost like a Cirque du Soleil show, and it was one of those shows that like after it was over, we, we looked at each other and we're like, we should have paid like $300 for the show in Vegas. That's how good it is. And it's an amphitheater where the seats are all like cool chairs, which is kind of fun and quirky. And right above that, is the rock climbing wall, which we didn't do this trip. Yeah, there. this is another thing that's completely free. So the rock climbing wall, the carousel, the ultimate abyss, all those things is not an extra charge. We're just honestly too scared to, to do the, the rock wall. I'm sorry, I just couldn't do it. I kept trying to hype myself up, but if that's your thing, do it, it's free. <laughs> One of the things that I think I can handle more than the rock wall they have this little like jungle gym thing that looks like Pringles chips. I wonder if adults are actually allowed in there. I don't. Every think time so. we walk by this, like I always just see kids in there, and I'm I'm, t I'm scared that I may get stuck if I go inside of there. Like, what if I get stuck and I can't come back out? <laughs> Ow, it hurts my adult legs. Okay, I'm gonna try to at least. And you know what? I do fit in here. I'm actually surprised. I guess it is for adult and children. <laughs> so don't be afraid to go in it if you're an adult. Right, this is as far as I'm going. <laughs> so there is one retail shop down here, it's called the Surf Shack, and that's where you can find like all your last minute surfing essentials, like bathing suits, suntan lotion, anything you need, they got you covered in there. And then there's also a candy shop called Sugar Beach, which we've never been inside, so let's go inside and see like what it's like in there. I've been so curious. Wow, there's actually a lot more in here than I anticipated. There's a whole ice cream section. So if you don't want the free ice cream that they give out on the ship, you could come in here. And it looks like there's like gelato and stuff with a bunch of different toppings. And not only that, they have like huge candy walls, which you could just fill with all your favorite candies. And they even have stuffed animals in here. There's a lot going on. <laughs> this is like a little kid's dream. Or the mega sized dum-dums behind you. Oh, no. That's awesome. I feel like we're in like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory or something right now. 
I really want to get something, but I'm gonna I'm gonna refrain right now. <laughs> I feel like you really gotta have a sweet tooth to come in here because the prices are not cheap. Like, this box of good and plenty licorice is $6. Of course, they got a Zoltar machine. Just don't wish to be big. Or if you do wish to be big, they actually have like a piano staircase. So your wish could come true. Just saying. <laughs> Did you see that they also have soup in your pennies? I didn't notice this before. But you could actually get the ultimate abyss. That's pretty cool. Zip lining, that was me. <laughs> or the carousel. Or I guess just, maybe that's on the other side. It just says Symphony of the Seas. I love that. One of the things that I really enjoyed about this ship is for rookies like us who have never been on this ship before, they have these all throughout. And it's just kind of like a real basic layout. If you want to see where stuff is, it tells you the deck number and about where it is on the ship. I just appreciate stuff like that, you know what I mean? Like, otherwise I would have been completely lost. It's taken us the entire trip for me to finally, like, get grounded and know where everything is. The next part of the ship we're gonna show you is called the Royal Promenade. And this is the part of the ship that you first enter into. It's filled with stores, restaurants, bars. There's a lot of bars. It feels kind of like a Vegas mall, if you've ever <laughs> yeah. been to, like, the the Caesar Forum or something like that. It does feel larger than like a normal mall because they have like, you know, bars that raise up to different levels and all yeah. sorts of stuff. And this is where you, the most important thing about this, this is where you can find the Bionic Bar, which is the robot bartender, which is one of the coolest things on this ship. Yeah. And I feel like there's never anybody there. And I'm like, why isn't everybody <laughs> at this robot bar as entertained as I am? But yeah, they have a bunch of like diamond shops. They have m shops where you can get your makeup. They of course have the shop where you can find all your Symphony of the Seas merch. They really do have something for everybody here. On the top level, they have places where you can book your shore excursions. They have a place where you can check out the photos that are taken on board. At every like venue, they have like photographers taking photos around the different neighborhoods and also at some of the restaurants. We didn't book any shore excursions on this trip and we didn't get any photos, so we don't really have any like tips or tricks on that front. This could have been us. Why didn't you why didn't you do that with me? <laughs> that could we could have You're telling me that we could have done that this whole time. In the photo studio, they also sell GoPros and GoPro accessories. Which is kind of funny to me because you can't really use GoPros on any of the slides I know. here. What the heck? Why would they sell that to us? We can't even use it. Well, you could use it at, on your excursion. On your excursion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah. They're teasing us. Look over here. You could get a 3D photo. Okay, I take it all back. We need to get one of our of our dogs. That's so cool. These are actually awesome. I wonder how expensive they are, though. I don't even want to know. <laughs> but you, they're very expensive. Or act, act like dogs. Oh, oh my god, god. so these photos, yeah. wow, in this yeah. cruise ship. So tell me more about it. So, this so, is, you know, in this cruise ship, there is one amazing photographer. Okay. His oh. name is Aju. Oh my god, that's Aju. your no. name. Are you? Oh, it's oh me. God. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody come get your photos. He's yeah. the best, apparently. I mean, according to him. I believe yeah, you. because I'm a portrait studio artist. I okay. have studios. So, so you take all these like really good photos. Oh, better yeah. than this. One of the best bars on the ship is the Schooner Bar. It's just so well themed over here. There's miniature ships, there's ropes. Even the chairs feel like there's something out of like an 18th century ship. And people just love hanging out here. One thing I forgot to mention is that almost every bar has signature drinks that are specifically advertised for that place. They're not on the main bar menu. So you might want to check out when you go to a new place if they have the signature drink. It's usually like three or four of them. And uh, you know, it gets you to try something new and different. One of the signature drinks at this bar is called the John Collins. And this is vodka shaken up with powdered sugar, lemon, and topped with club soda. And this is one of the ones that I haven't tried yet and it sounded so good. I just love that like all of these bars have specialty drinks and all the restaurants too. Like all of the premium restaurants have specialty drinks as well. That just makes it fun. There's so many different options to choose from. Oh yeah, it's like an alcoholic lemonade. <laughs> it's good. Woo! Nice and refreshing. Overall, it's a good drink and I'd probably give it like three and a half out of five pitches.
Also in the Royal Promenade is the next cruise booth. And this is where you can book your next cruise. A lot of people have been asking in the comments, like how do you get the best deal on a cruise? From what I understand, the best deal is as far out as possible. So like when the cruises first get listed, that's when it's the cheapest. And as time goes on, it becomes more and more expensive until like the week of the cruise. And then if they need people, it becomes cheaper. So either last minute or long time before, that's how to get your best deal. At next cruise, when you're on a ship, they usually offer like a deal. I think like right now it's like $600 off your next cruise. So, so what are we waiting for? So it's cheapest <laughs> to book kidding. your next cruise on the cruise well in advance. All throughout the ship, there's a bunch of art pieces, which is pretty cool. Like right in the middle of the Grand Promenade, there's this rolled up like VW Beetle. And right next to the elevators over here, there's whatever this is. It almost looks like kites. But I just gotta say, I love how the elevators here are glass elevators so you could watch it as you're going up. It's just like a nice little detail. There are a few different restaurants down here. One of them is Cafe Promenade. This is open 24 hours. You could grab cookies, sandwiches. It's all complimentary. They do have specialty coffees there as well, which are a little bit of an upcharge unless you have the drink package like we do. And then there's also Sorrento's Pizza, which is open, I don't think it's open 24 hours, but it's open really, really late at night. So if you want to come down and grab a slice, like after you hit up the clubs or whatever, at like 2 a.m., they got you covered. And we've actually never tried it. So I grabbed a, a piece to just see. It doesn't look <laughs> very good, but I'm actually surprised. They had other stuff besides pizza in there. Like they had salads and a whole bunch of different options. So the pizza definitely isn't good, but it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Probably it's like a two out of five Kitras. I would enjoy this if I was really hungry after like a night at the casino or a night like at the clubs or whatever, but this wouldn't be my first choice of, you know, restaurants on the ship. Also on the Royal Promenade in the midship is Copper and Kettle. This is like a British Irish pub. It's where you go to get grab a couple of drinks with friends at night. There's like a musician playing in there usually, and we just haven't made our way over there. I know. There's so many things to do in the ship, and we have not done like half of them, which is crazy. Looks like they have some stuff since it's the final night of the cruise that's like 50% off. <laughs> Me and you, but we're the captains. Yes. Yes, and then they have. Yeah, let's do a with you. So cute! This guy doesn't have a captain's hat though, what the heck? <laughs> He's underwater. Oh, then this is a picture frame. That's kind of yeah. cool, actually. I'm the captain now. Yeah. Oh, look at, they have picture frames, but they're like the towel animals. Oh my god, but they started to market the towel animals? Yes! How brilliant is that? That is smart. That's a really good idea. For those of you who have never cruised before, when you get back to your stateroom at the end of the night on a lot of cruises, your stateroom attendant will build a towel animal and put it on your bed. It's kind of a cool like nightly surprise to see what animal is waiting for you on your bed. One of the smaller venues on the ship is called On Air and it is in the Royal Promenade. It's kind of a place where they have like trivia and like little gatherings like that. We wanted to go to the Harry Potter trivia but we just didn't make it. So we didn't actually make it into On Air this trip, but maybe next time. Man, the more that we film this video, the more I'm like, holy crap, there's so much that we didn't get to do. It's kind of <laughs> mind boggling. So I feel like we did so much. Another thing in the Royal Promenade, they have a full blown Starbucks. This is not complimentary. It's the price of like a normal Starbucks. It's actually probably a little bit more expensive because you're paying a premium for stuff here. But yeah, if you miss your Starbucks, they got you covered here. They have the full menu like that you would find in a normal Starbucks. We weren't joking when we said there was a lot of bars in this area. There's this place called Bolero's, which is like a Latin themed nightclub slash bar where every night they have live Latin music and you could come, get your drink on, get your groove on. Another thing that we didn't get to do on this trip, unfortunately, but it looks really cool. <laughs> Speaking of bars, the coolest bar on this ship has to be the Rising Tides Bar. Why this is the coolest is because it actually moves from one level to another every like hour or so it will raise and lower and I don't know what other bar does that and what other bar does that at sea yeah so it's about that time we're gonna take it as our like fancy elevator up to the the next thing that we want to show you the next section of the ship which is called Central Park but why not do it in style why am I so excited for this 
You know that we're a theme park vlogging channel. This is like a theme park ride. It's like Tower <laughs> of Terror, but... But it moves much slower. So it's going to be a lot scarier, I think. No. <laughs> This is so cool. <laughs> We're moving. And I have a drink in my hand. It's amazing. It goes a lot slower than I thought it was going to go. I feel like the footage doesn't look that exciting, but trust me, it's a lot of fun. Say goodbye to everyone below. So cool. <laughs> Welcome to Central Park. <laughs> but like the Jurassic Park music. Welcome. I can't do it. While Kitra finishes her drink, I want to show you Central Park. This is a garden at sea. It's surrounded by the ship, so of course, you still have those outside rooms looking into the park. This is like a wonderful place to have a book and sit down with a cup of coffee and just like relax. And I, I think one of the things I love with this is it's surrounded by all this natural greenery and plants and they actually pipe in the sounds of bugs and birds. So it actually feels like it's a bigger thriving park than it probably actually is. But it, it is beautiful and it's unlike anything you'll see anywhere at sea. If you're going to Central Park, then chances are you're coming here to eat. There's a lot of restaurants and probably the top of the list for many people is Chops Grill. This is like a modern take on the classic American steakhouse. I, I remember loving my steak. I remember there was like some truffle fries that were so truffly that I, I just like really loved. If you're looking for a steak, this is obviously the place to go. And it just gives off like the classic steakhouse type of vibe. One of the other really high end premium restaurants here on the ship is 150 Central Park. And I was amazed at this place. This is a place that Kitra and I were kind of dreading going to because we didn't want to really dress I up. I didn't want to dress up. I didn't want to be fancy. I didn't think I would care about it. But this honestly, besides the Italian restaurant, Jamie's Italian, which we'll talk about in a second. This was probably my second favorite place out of everywhere that we ate. The food was amazing. Everything from the bread rolls that they give you in the beginning of your table service. They were like some truffle rolls. Oh yeah, the truffle oh, butter. Oh my God, so they good. were so good. If you can carve out one night to come to 150 Central Park. Because you gotta trust us. This was like the best restaurant on the entire ship. Yeah, there's a couple of bars here in Central Park. There's Trellis bar which is outside and you can kind of enjoy a cocktail in the park and on the other side of the park there's vintages which is part of jamie's italian and it's you know a place to sit down with a glass of wine they have so many different options of wine i think you can't go wrong there we we're not big wine people so we didn't drink there but again maybe Spe next time speaking of jamie's italian besides 150 park like i just said jamie's italian was the best food on the entire ship. Jamie, if you're watching this, your food is great. We love it. <laughs> they make the pasta fresh daily. And that's not even the best part. Like I loved a lot of the appetizers. Like they have this garlic bread that's amazing. What did you like? They bring over, I think it's called the meat slab or something like that. It's the it's a church. <laughs> I think it's called the meat plank, not the meat slab. Okay, whatever. Yeah. It's the classic charcuterie board, and I usually don't like those, and this one was great. Oh, so good. The lasagna was amazing. The bread rolls at the beginning are incredible. Like, I don't know, we, we ate there twice, and if, if I had my way, we would be eating there We in, might go tonight. there, like, we might go there for our final night. And one place we haven't had the time to check out is Park Cafe. This is a cafe that is in the middle of Central Park, and you can grab a sandwich, you can grab a drink, and I believe this is included in your cruise stay. So, I don't know, let's go check that out right now. First of all, I gotta say the music in here, Top notch. <laughs> They're playing Backstreet Boys. This place is actually really cool. They have a bunch of grab and go items like salad, sandwiches, soups. They even have a, like a build it yourself salad bar. It seems like a lot of the items are similar to the ones that you could get at the Cafe Promenade. But what they're famous for here, or what they're known for, is the Royal Kumulwek. I'm probably saying that wrong. And they carve the roast beef in front of you and put the au jus on it. 
with this little roll and then you could put horseradish or any kind of sauce that you want on top of it. He asked me how many pieces of meat I wanted it and I just said two, so I mean, theoretically, you could probably get like 10 pieces of meat on there if you really wanted. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. -hmm. Mm. Once again, not quite sure why we waited until the last day to try this place. This is so good. It's just like a freshly made sandwich. Tastes better than any of the sandwiches we got at the Windjammer Buffet. And uh, this probably gets like a four out of five Kitras. This is really good. And like I said, you could get it with like 10 slices of meat if you ask nicely. I'm sure they'll do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so over in the corner of Central Park, there's a bunch of high-end shopping retail locations. We're not interested in that. Let's look up and go to the pool deck because that's where the tour brings us next. We covered a lot of the pool deck in one of our videos, which we'll link above and below. But we can't, we're can't. we gonna go through it because there's a lot to talk about here, including the water slides. There's three different water slides combined. They're called the perfect storm. They're almost like racing slides. One's yellow and one's blue. I'm sure like me and you could go up there and we could see who comes down the quickest. Yeah. They're like sister slides, like they go the opposite direction. But there's no raft or anything. It's a body slide. It's dark, it's hot, it's humid in there. And then the other one, is i don't know how you would explain it but it has like a you go down the slide and it's actually really cool because there's clear parts to it and then there's parts where like there's lights inside of the tube and then you kind of end up in like a giant toilet bowl and you like swir <laughs> you like swirl around i like to call it a funnel she likes to call it a toilet bowl okay funnel okay we all know it's a toilet bowl and you flush your way out and then it pops you out just like a toilet bowl. Yeah, and we both did that one. I thought it was extremely fun, a lot better than the than the other slides over here. I'm just not a water slide person, okay? Like, I think they're fun, but I, I'm glad that I did it. And that being said, like, I, I probably would never do it again. <laughs> but there was a lot of, like, children who seemed to, like, love it. So I would say at least try it one time to see if you like it or not. It was, it was cool. The toilet bowl, I mean, whoever, like, would ever think that we'd be flush on a toilet bowl in our lifetime. <laughs> so there are two pools on the pool deck. One is the main pool, and it just looks like your normal swimming pool. And then the other one is called the beach pool, and it, um, it has, like, a zero entry kind of entrance. And I'm pretty sure it's salt water, because I got a bunch of it up my nose the other day, even though there's no signs anywhere that say that it's salt water. I think, yeah, that one is salt water, this one is chlorine. I tested both of them. Gotten water up my nose both times. Yeah. So I, I would, I'm 90% sure. And then there's a bunch of hot tubs on this, this deck too. There's four just right here. And then there's a few like on the edges. They're like everywhere, honestly. There's more hot tubs than there are swimming pools, which I can appreciate. And like, look, there's like nobody in this one right now. It's calling our name. You can get all your towels up here too. And the policy for the towels here is kind of weird. You have to check them out and you give them like your stateroom key. And if you lose the towel, you have to pay $25 per towel. So make sure that you do not lose your towel, guard them with your life. There's a bunch of bars on the pool deck, so don't worry. You don't have to go far from the water to get your alcohol beverage. And one thing I didn't mention so far is every day there is a featured drink of the day. Normally, cocktails are about $13. If you get the featured drink of the day, it's only $10. So if you don't have a drink package, that's a way to save. And the drink of the day today is the Blue Hawaiian, which Kitra has had a bunch of times. There's also waiters walking around the pool deck. We've been in the hot tub before when the waiter came over and like, do you want another drink? And brought us the drink to the hot tub. It's like living the life. I was mistaken. There's actually three pools. There's also the sports pool. Why is it called the sports pool? I do not know. But in this area, there's more hot tubs and there's the whole like splash zone area where I think it's just for children. And I mentioned this in another video, but on the starboard side of the ship is a smoking section on the pool deck. So if you want to avoid the smoke, you know, avoid that side of the ship. Also avoid the casino. You'll, you'll come out of the casino smelling like smoke. I think the best feature of the pool deck is obviously the ice cream machine. There's one on each side, so don't worry. And they got all your favorite ice creams. They're completely free. 
That's the best part of any cruise, am I right? At least it's the best part for me, I love it. <laughs> On the back of the ship, there's a ton of fun stuff to do. There's some table tennis, which <laughs> we didn't get to. There's zip lining, which Kitra did. And again, complimentary included. You just gotta go up there and make your reservation. It was actually really fun. I, I honestly am surprised that I liked it. So try it, don't be scared. Try it, it's free, you gotta do it. And right next to the zip line is the Symphony Dunes, which is a mini golf course, which is a ton of fun. If I have any advice, don't do it in the middle of the day when the sun is out. It's, it's really hot up here. 6 p.m. is a good time to do the mini golf. There's also a basketball court up here, which is, you know, another thing that we didn't quite uh, <laughs> utilize. But they also have a soccer net here, so maybe at some point they do soccer? Imagine me active on the ship. <laughs> I'm just like watching these people play basketball and I'm like, why? I'm already sweating. Like, why are they doing that? I think they do different activities, different days. So check the calendar on the app for more information. And if you work up an appetite up here, you can find the Mexican restaurant called El Loco Fresh. We went here on our very first day on the cruise and it was okay. It's a complimentary restaurant, you know, so everything is free. You could get like a million tacos if you wanted, but it is only open for lunch. So if you want to try it, get your butt over here before it closes and get a bunch of tacos. They even will come to your table and if you want to get margaritas, you could order a margarita from there too. It's pretty cool. And speaking of taking one for the team, on the back of the ship, they have this thing called the Flow Rider. This is an artificial wave simulator. They have two of them and you can basically surf or bodyboard on them. Kitra didn't want to do it, so I took the one, I took it for the team. I, I did the bodyboarding, which I was so afraid because you have to like sign away your life, and it says that like there's all these signs of risk of injury and stuff. I can tell you, it was so exhilarating, so much fun. Like my heart was racing doing it. And I highly recommend doing it. I know on our ship we had lower capacity, so it was very easy to get on. Normally you got to sign up, and there's like a line around the flow riders to get on. They have certain times for if you want, if you're more advanced, you can do the surfing, or if you want to be a learner and do the body boarding. But uh, yeah, consult the app for more information. I think my favorite spot on the entire ship is right here at the butt of the boat from the very top level. This is actually where you could get on the Ultimate Abyss and it takes you down to level six on the boardwalk. But I love it. I just feel like the views back here are so nice. And if you look down, you can like look into the aqua theater. So ordinary venture pro tip if you're looking for like the Kitra's number one spot on the boat, it's right here. If you're like me and you're hesitant, not sure if you want to do the flow rider, there's a bar at the back of the boat called the Wipeout Bar. This is a good place to contemplate your life choices and maybe make some bad decisions. Yeah, I'll sit at the bar while Peter does the, the flow rider. Sounds like it. And then I'll go to my favorite spot in the whole ship. Sounds like a perfect day. On the pool deck right next to the ice cream machines and the kids zone, they have this little store called Unboxed. And what's cool about this is a bunch of vending machines for stuff that you might need like Tom's or sunscreen or headphones, stuff that you might have forgotten to bring on the trip. Another cool thing about this area is they have a bunch of charging stations. What's cool about this is they're free. You can put your phone in there, you put a code on it. It's basically a place where you can store your phone. Have you ever had that problem where you're going into the pool and you have no place to put your phone? Well, you can put your phone in here and have it charge while you're in the pool. It's also worth noting, almost every day and night on the pool deck, they have live musicians playing to entertain. The crowds lounging and being in the water. Right outside of the solarium, which is the adults only area, they have these hot tubs on each side of the ship that kind of like poke out from the side. And I think these these have to be my favorite hot tubs on the whole ship. It's probably where we spent the most time. On the front of the ship is the solarium. The solarium is the adults only section. It is open air, but it, at the same time, it is also covered with these glass coverings which does make it hotter in here because it kind of hot boxes. Yeah, but it also blocks the wind, so it's nice. Yeah. Have you ever been on a Disney ship in the front that you know oh the wind God, is the insane? Worst. It's the worst. This is like perfection. Yeah. There's also this amazing bar with this really cool art piece, like this iridescent art that comes to life at night. It starts glowing. And by the way, I love this pool. Not only is it adults only, but you kind of like walk down these stairs into it. It's a cool place and you can look out at the front of the ship as you sail into the unknown ocean. 
I mean, I guess it's known, but you know what I mean. I showed you my favorite part at the butt of the ship, and I'm going to show you my favorite part at the front of the ship. This is where you can pretend to be Jack from Titanic. <laughs> I love it, and there's nobody out there right now. Perfect timing. I think the coolest part of this section is called the Skywalk. Like Skywalker, get it? And is you come over to the front, and there's actually a glass bottom that lets you see the water rush below you, many stories below you. It's kind of scary, like, what if, what if it broke? Yeah, I think about that every time that I step on it. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> and if you want to get like the nice breeze in your hair and you don't want to be like in the hot solarium, just come out here for a few seconds and ah, it's nice and breezy. If you have a suite on Royal Caribbean, you get access to the suite deck and that is reserved for Star, Sky, and Pinnacle members. And up there is a reserved deck so you can look below at the <laughs> the regular people, I guess. I don't know. Uh, it has its own bar, has its own hot tub. Uh, personally, I like being down here more than up there, but but it is a cool like little benefit of, of, if you paid more for a suite. Another one of the benefits of having a suite on Symphony of the Seas is they actually have their own lounge and a suite-only restaurant called Coastal Kitchen. We went there the other day for lunch and the food was amazing and it's complimentary. It's not an upcharge. And we found out that the menu rotates, so every day it's slightly different. So if we didn't have the premium dining package, I feel like we would have utilized that restaurant a lot more because the food was a lot better than the stuff that you could find like in the buffet. So, I mean, it's nice. All you gotta do is spend like $10,000 on a suite and then you get a nice restaurant. Yeah, it also has killer views. Yeah, oh my God, the views. How could I forget the views? The views were everything. The main buffet here on the ship is called the Windjammer, and they serve both breakfast and lunch. And it's different every day, although there are some mainstays like hash browns, french fries, <laughs> hamburgers, pancakes, all the good stuff. <laughs> but it, it's actually pretty good for a buffet. There's a good selection. There's even like, like one time I had some like Indian food. They have a bunch of stuff. Yeah. I don't think I quite enjoyed it as much as you did, but it is, if you do want like a good variety of stuff and something to please everybody, this is like the place to go. What I do love is right outside of the Windjammer, they have the piano stairs, which is so fun. And uh, you know, if you don't want to eat the food, at least come and go on the stairs. Another helpful tip I have for you is don't always take the elevator. Sometimes take the stairs because you got to burn off all that food that you're eating. Plus, there's all sorts of interesting pieces of art on all the stairwells. There's so many fun things to see, and it, you miss out if you take the elevators. And if you're looking to burn off those calories, then go to deck five. There's a running track that goes all around the ship. If you run the ship a couple times, you run a couple miles, you burn off some calories. I mean, who am I kidding? I'm not doing that on this trip. It's a good option to have. And you get to walk by the lifeboats that Hopefully, you'll never step onto, but you get to see them up close. Here's a really great pro tip. If you go to the front of the jogging track on either side of the ship, you'll find a shuffleboard and table tennis. And no one knows about these, they're kind of secluded. So, on this sailing, there isn't many people, but in the future, when things go back to capacity, this is a great place to get away from people and have your own little game. Also on deck four and five is the Royal Theater, and that is where they have the big shows on the ship. We saw Hairspray there, and honestly, that's the only time we were in there, but it was like the best venue on the ship. They usually do like two or three shows per cruise. I think this cruise, they had a couple comedians and stuff that we didn't actually go see, but it, it is an incredible venue. Also on deck five is the main dining room. Here's where you're gonna eat every night, complimentary. The menu changes from night to night. I've heard it's great. We have the dining package, which means that we we're basically paying for the premium dining with a heavy discount. So it made no sense for us to eat at the main dining room, but you can also eat there for breakfast, lunch, as well as dinner. Located on deck 12 is the restaurant called Wonderland. And it's one of the more interesting restaurants i don't know how to put it it's just very whimsical it's themed after alice in wonderland it feels like something that would be on a disney ship it does the the, the mad hatter looks a lot like johnny depp 
in the Tim Burton <laughs> Alice movie. The food is so creative and unique and you really have to go in there with an open mind and maybe try some stuff that you wouldn't necessarily try. Yeah, if I have any pro tip, you know, I'm a picky eater. Just, just let it flow over you. Try things that you wouldn't try because it, it's just a very different place. And if you are so picky, maybe don't go to yeah. Wonderland. Because we did talk to some people that were, that were like, we're, my husband's just too picky, like we're not going to go there. Yeah. But Peter, it, you're right, you are picky, but he tried some of the weirder stuff before even I, I like I was scared to try it. So I'm very proud of you. You did great, sweetie. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I do think it is one of the coolest restaurants on the chef. Don't miss it. In addition to the arcade at Playmakers, there is an arcade near the sports zone on deck 15. And this reminds me of an arcade from my childhood. Why is there nobody in here? Yeah, it's like from your childhood, except all the games are updated. Like Fruit Ninja. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, there's a Luigi's Mansion game? How fun is that? Look at this one. They got a Ghostbusters game. I'm guessing you, you, you get the ghosts. Oh, that's so fun. I've never seen that before. Neither have I. Dang, they got all the good games here. <laughs> I bet you it's like the feeling of like being on Price is Right. Yeah, it's like, it's, do you see what it is? Yeah. It's about bass fishing. <laughs> what? Why do I want to play this? Who needs Haunted Mansion when you got Haunted Part 2? Due to the pandemic, it seems like every other machine is unavailable. So that would really stink if like you really wanted to play Haunted Part 2 and you couldn't because it was unavailable. All the games in here give you tickets and I was wondering how do you redeem the tickets? Of course, they got a vending machine where you can actually pick your prizes using your tickets. I've never seen that before. That's actually kind of cool. It's called Prize Hunt. Imagine getting 5,000 tickets and winning Frogger. Oh no, somebody fell in the whirlpool toilet bowl thing. <laughs> what is, what's happening there? What is that? Why is, how did that get in there? Do you see what I'm talking about? Oh, it's a little duck. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. It's like a rubber... I think it's like a rubber bear or something. Huh. How did that bear get in there? <laughs> quiet in here. So this is just where you play cards? Yeah. It's called Seven Hearts. Why didn't we play any cards in here? Yes, yeah, so this is a place that's quiet for you to play board games, card games, or they have like internet access. I don't know how much that costs, but. It's like an internet cafe. It is. I remember like in the early 2000s when I went to Europe, <laughs> I had to check. It wasn't even, MySpace wasn't even around back then. That's how old I am. I think I was just like email. <laughs> I had to check my email for my friends. My boyfriend, you know, wrote me emails while I was away. That's so funny. Memor <laughs> memories. Okay, well, now I've got my boyfriend with me. So, it's like real life emails. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. In the Royal Caribbean store, they sell uh, playing cards that have the Royal Caribbean logo on it. But pro tip, I saw on views and cues, that if you go up to the guest services and you ask them for a pack of playing cards, they'll give you a pack of playing cards. It's like unbranded, unmarked, like cheap pack of playing cards. But if you want to play cards in the card room or even in your own state room or on deck 15, I heard that you could do that. I, I have no proof. I have not done it. So uh, don't blame me if it doesn't work. While you're on deck eight at Central Park, you could just walk on over towards the back of the ship and you can find Dazzles, which is kind of like a lounge, nightclub. There's always live music in there and I, I believe they serve drinks. And then during the daytime, they will often have classes there. Like we went to our towel folding class there. So it's just a nice like open venue. Like just like a nice kind of fancy atmosphere in there.
located on deck four is a Zumi. This is a premium dining experience, so it's gonna cost extra. They have two sides to this restaurant. One side is the hibachi side. This is kind of like a Benihana where you've got a chef cooking in front of you and he puts on a show. And it's a really fun place to, not only is the food good and the entertainment good, but it's a fun place to kind of mingle with your fellow cruisers and get to know people. And the other side of Azumi is a sushi restaurant and it's actually priced per order. So like each sushi roll is a different price. And we got to dine there too. We both don't really love sushi that much, but it was cool to just go there and enjoy some Japanese food because it's one of the really only places that you could get Asian food on the entire ship. And of course, Royal Caribbean has a casino. It's called Casino Royale. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> yeah. Here's where you can gamble with all your money. Or you could win money. Like we came here and we actually won money, so it was pretty yeah. exciting. But I think that doesn't happen. That rarely happens. Yeah. So, you know, Maybe give yourself a budget before you come here. Don't end up keep on going to that ATM machine. You yeah, know. in this casino, it is a smoking casino, so keep that in mind. There are like quote unquote smoke free sections, but I found no matter where you sit in this casino, you end up reeking like cigarettes. So, I mean, it's like that with any casino, so just keep that in mind. If you're walking to the casino from the entertainment place, you'll come across an art gallery. It's like this hallway filled with all this art. I think they do an auction or something at some yeah, point during do. the cruise. They do, we missed it. <laughs> we missed the auction, but it's fun to come in here and just kind of look at the art on the wall. I think this one's my favorite. It is so stupid and ridiculous. So midship on deck four is where you'll find the entertainment place. This is a place that you'll spend a lot of your nights here on board. <laughs> yeah. And here is where you get Studio B which we saw the ice skating show. Yeah, we saw the ice skating show and there. We actually saw two ice skating shows. One was better than the other, but they were both very entertaining. And our pro tip for this place is, we think the best seats are like dead center. We sat dead center and we sat on the side. Both had great views, but I think like the best view is dead center if you could get those seats. And I think they also, transform Studio B into like a nightclub. Like it looks like there's gonna be like a silent disco or something happening tonight. That's cool. <laughs> and then also in this area is the attic. This is a place where you'll see comedy shows, adult comedy shows. We actually did, never were in there, so I don't have any intel for you, but it seems like a cool venue. Right across from the attic is Jazz on 4. This is a place where you can go nightly to hear jazz music played live. And there's obviously a place to hang out, a place to grab, grab drinks and a place to lay back and listen to the music. At the very front of the ship on deck number six is Vitality at Sea, a spa and fitness center. They have everything in there from a luxurious spa to a barber shop. You could even go to a hair salon and get your hair done. I should have done that. Why didn't I do that? <laughs> and then of course they have the gym and fitness center in there as well. And I just find it really funny that like on deck number six, we have like, you know, the healthy side. And then on the back where we started our day, we have the <laughs> the boardwalk area with all like the deep fried foods and stuff. So in Royal Caribbean, they have your kids covered. Kids age six months to 11 years old. And then actually there's a team club. They have like all sorts of sections, including Adventure Ocean. They have tons of activities to keep your kids busy while you're up on the pool deck drinking and having fun. We don't have kids, so I have no experience in this area. <laughs> and I don't, I don't think we're gonna they're not gonna let us in there to play, so. Dang it, Finding Nemo? What the heck, this isn't a Disney cruise. Okay, that turtle lied to us because there's actually an escape room inside of here that anyone of any age can play and it's $9 per person. It's a 60 minute experience and it's like you're escaping a submarine. Yeah. It's another thing that unfortunately we didn't get to do, even though we found out later that it was actually included with our suite, like you get to play the game for free. So we really should have taken advantage of it, but it gives us something to do next time. And on the inside of the solarium, there's actually the Solarium Bistro, which is a complimentary restaurant that's open for dinner. It's like a buffet style restaurant and they do have some premium like upgrades. So if you wanted to get a lobster or something, I think you'd just pay a price for that, but everything else is complimentary. And this is another one of those things that we didn't get to do on our trip just because we had the premium dining package and we wanted to utilize those restaurants. So, you know, I sound like a broken record, but add it to the list for next time. We have made it to the end. 
And what is at the end, you might ask? It is Hooked Seafood, the final premium restaurant aboard Symphony of the Seas. It's located on the 16th floor at the very front of the ship, so I'm sure the views in there are amazing. And this restaurant has nothing but seafood. We were actually gonna come here one of the nights, but Peter doesn't really like seafood, and I thought maybe he could get like a piece of chicken, but no. I think the only thing on the menu that wasn't seafood is like was coleslaw and like french fries. Hey, I was well willing to try the seafood, but you were like, let's go to Jamie's again. Yeah, so I ended up going to Jamie's Italian three times because that was our favorite. But uh, yeah, if, if you like seafood, I will say it does, there is like kind of a fishy smell even standing outside of the restaurant. So it kind of like hits you in the face. You're like, oh, I'm on a boat and there's seafood. I'm sure it's good. People say it's one of the best. It's just we didn't get to try it on this trip. We hope you enjoyed this full tour of Symphony of the Seas. If you want to see more videos from our adventure on the ship, we'll put the videos right over there. And please, subscribe for more. Do it. <laughs> I want to say thank you to some of our Patreons. That includes JD Cook, Mike Garza, Daniel, and the Ouellette family. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll, we'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next adventure. adventure.